Lights. Episode 132, the pub is open. Oh, my God, so many things. First of all, what are we drinking? Right here in my Seamus McDaniels. Where's that? St. Louis, Dogtown. Um, we're drinking a little Savannah River Brewing Company called No Jacket Required. I think it's in the honor, in honor of the Masters, but they can't really rip off the logo. But the can is gorgeous. Yes. Well done, Savannah. And it's a Czech-style Pilsner. I like any Czech-style Pilsner. It's a great color. Yep. In um, Ireland, if you order a Budweiser, at least some of the places, they give you a bottle that looks like Budweiser, but it's green, and it's called Czechweiser. Excellent. And it's b- even better than Budweiser. I don't even like regular Budweiser. I like Bud Light. I don't like Budweiser. Mm-hmm. And then my uncles who worked at the brewery explained to me the difference. It's something about rice, wheat, hop, contents. Because Budweiser, <laughs> Budweiser would give me a hangover. Bud Light, never. Never. Yeah, one's got higher hops or uh, rice or I don't know. You can't have those conversations after you've been drinking. It's like math. No. Yeah, this content. Yeah. And yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> that's what we're drinking. How was the Masters? The Masters was wonderful. And I just want to tell everybody, well, it wasn't wonderful for those people who went on Saturdays. No. Saturday. Um, if you're a golf fan, and I won't spend a lot of time on this because I have a little article later about that. Um, you can go on StubHub and get tickets to the practice round. Especially if Tiger won't be there. I don't think he'll be there next year. No. Um, for like Monday is cheap, Tuesday, Wednesday is a little more expensive, but anywhere from 400 bucks to they can go crazy. But you can get them, and people go $400. I know that's a lot, but you get to go in at 8 o'clock, and you can stay until 6 o'clock at night. What other sporting event? And you're like, you can be five feet away from – the golfer, like if you go down and go to a tee box, the practice rounds are so much more fun. Even Ron, who's six foot two, went to a real round and was like, I couldn't see shit. I didn't, didn't. And you can't see. So the practice rounds, you can see everything. You can run around, go to the pro shop, get your souvenirs. It's just a, um, and if you love golf, you should go there once just to see it in person. The whole course, yeah. They say that they, um, the master says they don't paint the uh, fairways green. Well, my tennis shoes to tell you a different story. Yeah. Somebody's painting something green because I now have green tennis shoes, and I started out with beige. They're green. <laughs> yeah. And then one year, because I'm allergic to every chemical on earth, I stepped in a bunch of, they have little little bubbles, little plastic thing, bubbles, balls. And when you step, they're tiny, 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 like BBs. Yeah. And when you step on them, they shoot paint everywhere. So we're actually helping them paint. Right. Well, I woke up, my feet were so blistered because my tennis shoes weren't oh, waterproof. Yeah. And I stepped in so much of that. I was like, what the fuck happened to my feet? I guarantee you it was that. I don't have proof. I bet they were sparkly green. N- yeah, they were green, <laughs> but it wasn't a sparkle. It wasn't. Um, will you turn my mic up a little bit? Just yeah. a tiny bit. Thank you, thank you. That's even better. A little more, a little more. Yeah, I thought it was good. Okay, that's good. Am I loud enough, termites? Um, before we go, I didn't go on the road. I was off last weekend, so, but I did get this in the mail. It's a St. Louis Cardinal pendant. Cool. Yeah, she came to the taping and then saw the Amazon special and really liked it. <coughs> By the way, Termites, if you like the Amazon special, even if you didn't like it, just go rate it like you did like it, okay? Thank you. Even if you've already rated it. Even if you've already yeah. rated it. Just, and then she made me my own pendant. I didn't know you could do this on Etsy. Ah. I don't really understand Etsy. I don't get it. And I'm never selling anything on eBay again. Because I found an old master shirt that was brand new yeah. that wouldn't fit anybody in my family. Put it on eBay? Yeah. <laughs> and then some guy said, can you measure from armpit to armpit the inch? I'm like, dude, this isn't a real fucking store. No, I'm not doing that. It's a men's medium. Figure it out. Jesus, the amount of questions. Can you tell me the amount of polyester to pay men like my men cotton? It is a golf shirt. Yes or no? It's very simple. It's a blue golf shirt. It has a yellow flag right here of the... Oh, my God. Mm Mm-hmm. No, I took it down. Oh, wow. It's if they're a pain in the ass. I'll give it to a friend. I'll find somebody who's got a teenage son that's a men's medium. Yeah. Because my nephews are too little for all that yet, and then the, the older ones are too big for that. So nobody's a medium. But anyway, maybe I'll give it to a termite. Maybe. 
Maybe I'll maybe I'll throw it out at a show to somebody that looks like a guy medium. <laughs> it was seventy five bucks. It wasn't cheap. I just bought the wrong size because the gift shop there is pandemonium. Yep. Then all right. Can I tell you this is the dumbest thing I've ever done? And my dad doesn't know this, but my dad doesn't listen to this podcast. No, no, they are not listening to the podcast. Um, my mom always asks what time it comes on. Whenever <laughs> she still she won't know how to find it. But they, they like to learn. so if you go to the gift shop at the Masters, I would recommend that's the first thing you do because it is pandemonium is chaos. I can't explain the amount of chaos. So I go in and I go up to the fancy men's part because I'm going to get my dad something for Father's Day because he always likes to look fancy in his uh -huh. Masters thing. Well, my dad's old school and he likes a V-neck sweater. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, right. Um. And there was a beautiful blue one. They don't have prices up there. It has the number. So there's like 50 shirts or sweaters and hoodies in it. You'd say, I, could you have a large in number 18? Mm -hmm. Whatever. So the lady did. And um, she brought it over, and I just threw it in my bag. It's a pandemonium. And yeah. so then I go to check out, uh -huh. and I did think the lady, I bought a lot of stuff for the kids and all that. I did think the amount was kind of high. But there's no arguing this at this point. There's right. hundreds of people in there. It's, it's, more in your bag. it's just ridiculous. And I thought, well, that seems kind of crazy, but maybe I threw an extra shirt in here or something. I get home. and He doesn't know this because it's still for Father's Day. The sweater was a Peter Millar, which is fancy. Yep. And I figured it's pricey, but it's Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And I plan on burying, burying him in it when he's dead. <laughs> Or because I'm not going to give it to my brothers. No. no. Nobody is ripping this shit off because it costs me too much money. I'll wear it. I will wear it before I give it away. Or he's going to be buried in it. Um, uh, I got it. They ship your stuff back if you want. So I went on Tuesday, and they you can go to shipping. Yep. And it works like, I mean, they should be in charge of everything. The masters really should. The organization, they scan your license. You go through here. They print out a thing. You hand it to the person. They check it all off. You say, yes, boom, it is gone. It arrives at your house the following day. It's a miracle. Awesome. It's a miracle. Anyway, I go through the box, and I get his sweater out. It was $400. What? Yes. <laughs> it's, I did notice it said made in Italy. But I thought, well, is Peter Millar from Italy or Travis, no. whatever his name is, Matthews or whoever the hell? I can't return it. It's probably merino wool. It's some sort of crazy Italian wool. But it's very light. I mean, he still can't wear it till fall. He better live till fall. He better not have another incident. Cause it, or, or I'm going to take it back to the Masters myself. God. Anyway, it was so much fun. I saw all the golfers, Tiger. I saw everybody. He was limping day one. That's why I'm sure by. Uh, but it, uh, I forgot to finish this, the pendant story. Shoot, I just because I said it. No, this is from Jen. Jen, I got it. I love my little Cardinals thing. The Cardinals aren't doing great just yet. Give them time to heat up. Yeah. They take time. Yeah. We have a new player on the Cardinals who's just a phenom, Jordan Walker. And he's already cranking home runs out. Right. So I'm very excited about is that. Is he replacing Colton in your heart? <sighs> no one will replace Colton. And I was okay. going through my T-shirts, cleaning the stuff out. Um, I still, my Cardinals shirt that I wear to every game is Colton Wong. It says Wong on the back. <laughs> I'm now two teams behind. Yeah. Cardinals, yeah. Uh, Brewers, mariner. and now he's a Mariner. Yeah. He's going to be so sad. Yeah. He's Hawaiian. He's closer to Hawaii. He is closer to Hawaii, but he's going to be in the rain a lot, and his flights are going to be long. We've already discussed it. I feel terrible for him. I don't think he should have accepted that. You and he have discussed it? I would have discussed it with him as his agent and said, we're going to find something a little sunnier for you. <laughs> yeah. How about San Diego? They're good. Yeah. They're great. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't. What are we trying here? Well, I've got to tell you, I already tried it, and I love them. Doritos Flamin' Hot Cool Ranch. Now, all those good. things challenge each other. Flaming Hot Cool Ranch. Which is it? Yeah. It's both. Good. Yep. They taste like Cool Ranch, but then at the end, they're hot. I think those have been around for a long time. You just haven't tried They've been around for a long time? I think so. Well, this bag is $2.29. I think that's a lot. Oh. I also got a soda at Burger King. <laughs> on the way to the Masters, and it was three dollars. No, it was Wendy's. Three bucks. Yeah, I think that's a lot. That's a lot for a fast food soda. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that's why you're all having problems. <laughs> you need to make that soda cheaper. These are great. 
Shout out to Doritos. And that I brought some Master's potato chips. Here's the thing about the Masters. You might spend three, four, five hundred dollars to get in a practice round. But you get to walk around, you get to see everybody you've always wanted to see. Um, it was weird to see Phil Mickelson come out too. Because he lost a ton of weight. And you can sit at the driving range all day. It's fascinating to watch these guys, um, if you like. And then he walked down by himself, and he kind of, nobody was really excited to see him. (laughs) It's the downfall. Blood money. Yeah, Yeah. Phil turned out to be a a dick, really. (laughs) At the end of the day, he was the people's man, the man of the people. Mm -hmm. Turns out, psycho. Psycho gambler, psycho everything else. Mm. Here's the thing, the snacks down there, very cheap. Best egg salad sandwich, it's two bucks or something. These are like 75 cents, as they should be, not 250. Uh, but really, they're kettle chips. That's how you brought them home. I brought them home for the kids. Yep. Yeah. Pimento cheese and egg salad. Pimento cheese and egg salad. Oh, yeah. And last but not least, we're going to be trying this Old Bay potato chips. I just had Old Bay last night on some shrimp. Good. Delicious. Anything with Old Bay on it's great. Mm-hmm. Uh. I might as well just lick the jar of Old Bay. <laughs> just go in the kitchen once every hour and go, nah. <laughs> They're okay. But now, see, this whole thing is four fifty. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's three of those. Yep. That's the price you pay for having to get something at the gas station. Your math is so good. They stick it to you. It's fast math. Speaking of gas stations, not just a <laughs> gas station, it's a lifestyle. Bucky's has just opened in Auburn, Alabama today. Yes. Told my friend Terry Henley to get down there. Um, that's my backup seltzer after I finish this beer. Queen news. Queen news. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start a rumor here. Okay. Stevie has canceled three shows of her own, and she has canceled one show with Billy Joel. Did we talk about this last week? Uh-huh. Well, they postponed it. She is seventy. going to be 75 this month. They postponed it till March of 2024. Oh, wow. Hey, old turtles, what's going <laughs> on here? Well, how about let's do one six-month block at a time. Hmm? We're 75 years old. Right. How about we do that? But whatever, you know, good for her. I want them to live forever. Um, I don't know how old Billy Joel is, um, but he ain't, he ain't a spring chicken either. They keep saying there's COVID in the band, for Stevie's band. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I really think if it was just the bass player or the guitar player, not to demean that position, but like my friend Dax, the drummer would say, if somebody fell out, you can get another drummer. Right. It may not be your first choice, but the it band, it might be Dax. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Dax knows somebody who could fill the part of that band that, yes. that could go and learn the songs in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. I think it's Stevie. I do. <laughs> and I don't blame her for not saying it. If it is her... You do not need all that press. You do not need all those questions and all that bullshit. But COVID has become the new, like, kind of, the, the, like, <laughs> fuck off excuse. Because yeah. nobody questions it anymore. You're like, especially with the old bands. They just go, yeah, somebody's got COVID. Everybody goes, uh. Okay. But three shows? <laughs> and you, mm, and the show, um, an arena show with Billy Joel? Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying. I don't want it to be, he'll be 74. On May 9th. On May 9th? Oh, they're both May babies. Isn't that cute? They yeah, can have a birthday May. party out on the road if they're healthy. <laughs> mm-hmm. They can celebrate their 75th birthday together. Yay! <laughs> Billy and Stevie. Um, Dolly has her master's sing on. You need to show your credentials the whole time you're there, which I find to be a bit of a pain in the ass, but I did it. And um, Stevie, yeah. who I hope is not six. But somebody else explained to me why you cancel three plus one more show mm-hmm. for a bass player or whatever. Can't we? Yeah. That's um, why. Sounds fishy. And I don't have a, a Queen Tay Tay here, but <laughs> broke up with that guy yep. six years. Now she's going on tour. Yep. It's better than sitting at home and crying. Sure. As my dad would say, you're allowed to cry for two hours and then it's going to start to be a problem. <laughs> Your anytime any of us that would happen, he'd go, 
Give it two hours in the basement, no longer. Then you're then you're wallowing, you're wallowing, and that leads to uh, depression. So two hours, cry your eyes out, get back. Yeah, Perfect. it's good. She's going to work now. Share. Break up. Go make dinner. Yeah, maybe she'll meet somebody on the road. Yeah, I think it's hard if you're Tay Tay, because people you think do they want my money? You need to find somebody else rich. Yeah, and then you don't think about the money. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't want me for the money. Um. She needs to do what Dolly did. Yeah. He's an asphalt guy. Dolly's husband does asphalt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do the yeah, asphalt. That's great. Yeah. yeah. How about your spring bug killer? My guy, Steve. He's yeah. wonderful. wonderful. He might be married. I don't know. Yeah. But there's a guy that's perfectly content with the job they have. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she needs to find. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> Tay-Tay. That's some advice from Aunt Cat. <laughs> find somebody who likes what they do, and they're not impressed by your bullshit. <laughs> You're... But I didn't like that Dolly's husband never came to anything. I thought that was kind of extreme. Like, you cannot want to be involved, yeah. but at least show up when I get, like, she got a big award here, a big award there, and Carl's like a ghost. You never get to see Carl. Right. Carl Dane. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Um, here's my share update. Okay. Now, this is an extremist lead sentence to an article. Is Cher going broke? No. no. Cher's never going to go broke. And that is not as long as I'm alive. No. Because I'll still pay to go see her, and I'm still downloading Cher songs. Oh, exactly. um, back in October 22, the Believe Singer Mansion in Malibu went up for sale for $85 million. Whoa. I can't believe she's getting rid of Malibu. I thought that was her thing. I thought yeah. that's her favorite spot. <clears throat> Maybe the $20 like it. Well, it used to be the, one of my... One of my I made very few men, uh, friends in L.A. that weren't already comedians that I knew. I had my friends. But it's hard to meet fun, normal people in Los Angeles. There's a lot of crazy people out there, a lot. Um, but one guy, uh, I met him because I needed a realtor, and his name is Ron. And he is just so fun that I, I at one point I said, okay, I'm ready to buy a little tiny house. A tiny, tiny house. Tiny house. Not a real tiny house. I meant a small one. Um and I said, but I don't want to rush into it, and it needs to be turnkey because I'm never home. I don't have time to, but like small, like 1,200 square feet. And he said, he would call me on a Monday and say, I don't have anything that is what you want, but do you want to just go look at some, um, do you want to go look at Cher's place? It's for sale. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like yes. a, like the penthouse apartment and something. Wow. We went and looked at, so we looked at crack houses. He's like, do you want to see a redo in West Hollywood, they're calling it a redo. And it was just a crack house. There were no walls. I mean, the price. But anyway, share eight. I thought Meryl Malibu was a place she liked. Yeah. 85 million bucks. That was in 2002. It's 13,000 square feet, seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, sits on 1.73 acres of land, complete with a tennis court and a swimming pool. The massive Mediterranean pro- uh, style property overlooks the Pacific Ocean is located on Pacific Coast Highway. Pain in the ass, Pacific Coast Highway. Unless you're a night owl and you're go- leaving at midnight. Yeah. Less than six months later, however, the original price of the mass is an impressive in state dropped 10 million. It's now being sold for a whopping 75 million. Because it's going to fall into the ocean. Because it's going to fall into the ocean. Okay, Jack Madigan. Erosion. Yes. Kansas is going to be <laughs> ocean side. Dad, that's not going to happen ever. You don't know. But okay. Um. Why? I wonder where she's going to live. Where is she going to live? Every room has two views of the ocean, each of which is so beautiful. The water's always glistening, the sunset, the sunset always happening. My house is so special. It's my sanctuary. My fortress is really the only place I have any privacy. There's no place I'd rather be. I'm comfortable here. This house wraps its arms around me. It's weird. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I'll have to. Maybe I can get my Ron on it, my secret guy. Ron, he, he always used to know a lot of the gossip. Um, yeah, I'll text him. Where is Cher going to live? I'm worried. I'm worried about her. Maybe she's moving to Nashville. I don't see Cher in Nashville. I could see her in Europe. Yeah. Italy. Paris. Rome. Yeah. 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 It's got to be where shit's happening. Yeah. 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 Not, not, she's not Chattanooga. Not Chattanooga. <laughs> no. She, not that there's things aren't happening in Chattanooga. Things that I enjoy, but I don't think... <laughs> Cher wants to go bass fishing. (laughs) 
come on, we're going to Nickajack Lake. I'm going to launch the boat right down at the old hen house. Come on. <laughs> I don't think she cares. Uh, she might. Update, 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 update. Oh, my God, update. This is crazy. Okay. First sighting in six months. Who have we found? Scientology leader David Miscavige oh. spotted at an LRH. L. Ron Stop. Hubbard. I love it. It's when Tom Cruise used to go off on those speeches. You don't understand. LRH. And he'd say it like we were all supposed to know what that meant. I did know what it meant, but a lot of people, I'm sure, like, what's it, Ralph Lauren backwards? No, it's L. PCB. They had a birthday party for LRH. I mean, we have a birthday party for Jesus every year, so I guess this is their Jesus. Sure. You have a cat. I, I decided the cat's birthday is on Master Sunday. What? <laughs> Master Sunday doesn't always <laughs> fall on Easter. Sometimes it's not on that Sunday. <clears throat> but this year it was. And I don't know when they were born. I just found them, and I went all through my phone because it, I, one, yeah, whatever. I found them, like, in March. Or, no, um. May and April. So make it Day No. I want him to be born on Master Sunday. But it changes. Every year, yeah. yeah, that's the problem. That math right, that's, that's the math problem. Yeah. This is why, yeah. Oh, I'm going to post a picture. Um, uh, Chapo's <laughs> leg was hurt. Uh-huh. And so I took him uh, to the vet, an emergency vet situation. And he's fine. Whatever. It's not broken. And then they're like, you know, would you like... She goes, I don't think it's broken. I just think it's nice, nice. All these vets are so young. I know I'm getting old. But they're like 28. And I'm like, wow, you already finished school and shit? This is amazing. Good good, good go-getters, yeah. There's plenty of the children out there doing great things. She said, I don't think it's broken at all. I think it's just sprained. And she gave me like, you know, cat medicine or whatever. Tylenol for cats. And... uh she goes, we can do an x-ray, though, if you want. Because I think that I know my parents have become those crazy animal people. I know there's crazy animal people that even if the vet said, I don't think it's broken, they would still want the x-ray. Right. And I, she's like, they start at $275. I'm like, the cat was free. <laughs> Four of them. The cat's a squatter. Four. Is it, they're squatters. <laughs> they're bullshit feral. But anyway, when I checked out, it said, client discharge. T- Chapo Madigan has been released for juice. <laughs> I don't say El Chapo because they don't understand the L part, and I don't want to get into it. it. It's just, yeah, they yeah they just put an ale. Well, it's like that? Like the ale? <laughs> like Linda? Oh, my God. It was funny to see it in type, though. I got my receipt. Chapo Madigan has been released for discharge. Anyway, LRH. They had a birthday party. Church of Scientology has been found... Uh, as the church, his leader has been found after going missing in action from the pub, public eye roughly six months ago, avoiding subpoenas. Right. That's what he's doing. Right. Why is that illegal? It is kind of illegal. Yeah. But he can just keep saying, well, I don't know. I wasn't at that house. I was at a different house. I don't know. <laughs> the religious head honcho, they actually wrote that, David Miscavige, reemerged uh, on the anniversary of founder L. Ron Hubbard's birth. In 1911, God, that guy was born in 1911, in Clearwater, Florida, marking his first known appearance since September of 2022. Yeah. The LRH birthday event took place on March 13th. It was jam-packed with Scientologists who eagerly listened to Miscavige's speech, which we've heard lasted three hours. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now you're Carlos Mencia. (laughs) (laughs) And the wait staff hates you. Um... Come on, three hours? That's crazy. Yeah. It was their first official return to the LRH birthday event after uh, pressing pause during the 2020 lockdowns. His, fe- his speech was filmed, and the footage was al- allegedly floating around to Scientology orgs all over the world for two weeks after the event. His appearance is important for several reasons. He was accused of dodging process servers for months to avoid being handed paperwork for a labor trafficking lawsuit. Um, three ex-Scientologists are suing Miscavige and informed a judge that they were unable to locate the church's leader. The process service had tried to serve him in L.A. and, and in Clearwater. 
Uh, the judge said the alleged victims had demonstrated due diligence in attempting to locate him, and Miskovich is actively concealing his whereabouts or evading, evading service. Yes, I'm sure he was. She, she ruled, good lady, that he was served by substitution and named an official defendant in the case, but his, case, but his attorney hit back. Oh. Yeah, but it, they didn't win. He's still got to show up. But he showed up for this, the birthday party in Clearwater. Good for him. Yeah. You got it. 1911, he was born. I don't know how when a person tells you, as, as LRH did, the real way to make a buck is to make up a religion. And then he did it, and then you believe that he was for reals. I mean, all the people, Buddha, Jesus, Moses, Mm -hmm. none of them said, hey, I got an idea if you make up a religion. I wouldn't even let it be tax deductible. I don't think there should have been any more religions after 1920. Okay. All the big ones were established. Just pick one. You, you want to be Jewish? You want to be Catholic? You want to be Lutheran? So I, I am saying it is not a religion. And I think they paid off those people, those senators, to vote so that they're tax exempt. Yeah. Now, okay. there's probably going to be people following me around in my bass boat now that I've <laughs> <My> seen <bass laughs> I know. I am scared to say stuff, though. I may have to edit that out. We, won't put Scientology in we will not put Scientology in the schnotes. No. No, I'm terrified of those people. And you know what else you should be terrified, people? Update! (gasps) Crazy turkeys, super aggressive in Massachusetts again. What? What are you guys doing with your turkeys? I had to stop yesterday on the way to the gas station to avoid a turkey. They're all over. Tennessee. Tennessee, Missouri. And the wild ones are black. Like, I don't know that city folk would know what it was. Because it doesn't look like the turkey you would think. But anyway, no, doubt at the farm, in the Missouri, in the farm, there's packs of them. And even when they work together as a pack, they don't do anything. Last May, a turkey charged at a woman who was nine months pregnant and her husband and dog in their lawn in Dedham, an attack that was caught on camera. Turkeys have been following and intimidating people in Dedham, Massachusetts, including a postal uh, letter carrier. Uh, the notice comes on the heels of the news that the U.S. mail carrier had to have his hip replaced after being attacked by turkeys in Cambridge last month. Wow. Turkeys breed between March and May, a season when male turkeys try to establish dominance through aggressive behavior. The best thing we can do to curb this behavior is stop feeding them. Is that what you're doing, Massachusetts? Right. Because guess what Missouri and Tennessee aren't doing? Exactly. Feeding the wild turkeys. No. And guess what? They do not need to be fed. They are fat. They're huge. I mean, I know there's a lot of feathers there, but they're fatties. Waddling across the road at their own goddamn pace. Um, This will keep them farther from our front door. It's funny to me, though, that it's just this suburb in Massachusetts. Somebody, you know what I'll bet you? There's one person feeding the crap out of these things. At night. Yes, sneaky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Linda McMahon told NBC Boston, NBC 10 Boston at the time, she figured the turkey was just trying to protect the baby turkeys, something I can relate to, so I respect the move, but it was very, very scary for us. In Cambridge, mail carrier Eddie Mitchell said the turkeys that attacked him flew in his face, (laughs) leaving him horrified (laughs) and a long low to recover. They started to gobble, gobble, he told NBC Boston. I was like, get me back to my truck. I turned my bag to defend myself. I walked back to my truck. And that's when they started making noises. They flew right in my face and knocked me over. Whoa. The postal representative confirmed the, an attack in Cambridge as well. Another one. It's hazards you don't expect, like the hose or the rake under the leaves or the animal you've walked past a hundred times without incidents that can take you by surprise. Turkeys, while sometimes docile, have known to be very territorial and can get aggressive if they feel threatened. Wow. He didn't provide statistics on how many turkey attacks have been reported, but said that turkey encounters are common but usually a nuisance. Blocking a vehicle or chasing a carrier en route, which doesn't require a report. Wow. Other people have also been complaining about the turkeys. I'm going to have to. I guess I've seen so many. And like, termites, are turkeys attacking you guys? Or is, it, is there some lunatic in a Massachusetts suburb feeding them inordinate amounts of food and now they're cocky and aggressive? 
And they're even more hungry because you're feeding them more. And then they're like, okay, right. it's snack time, bitches. <laughs> I oh. would or would not know that from feeding the, quote, feral cats, greenies, the puree. But you know what the puree was great for? They love it, number one. It's like crack. It's it look, My sister goes, well, what's that? She has cats. I'm like, uh-huh. it's like a mayonnaise in a to-go thing, but not as thick as mayonnaise, more like mustard, and you just squeeze it out. It was perfect to hide Kato's pain pills. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just smashed it all up in there. It's the new peanut butter. It is. It's the new peanut butter for them. They love it. (laughs) Update! (laughs) Theranos update. Theranos update. Theranos update. Yeah. Don't worry, it's not her. It's her partner. Work partner. Former Theranos executive Ramesh Sunny Balwani, that was the guy, will be heading to prison later this month after an appeals court rejected his bid to remain free while he contests his conviction for carrying out the blood testing hoax with his former boss and lover, Elizabeth Holmes. The Ninth uh, Circuit of Appeals issued a decision refusing his request and ordered him to start his 13 year prison sentence on April 20th. Tick tock, tick tock. What's the date today? It's uh, April 11th. He's got nine days of freedom. And then that's it. Even if you serve half. Yeah. That's a long time to be in a pokey. In a pokey. In a, the, in in a, a pokey. In a pokey. In a pokey. <laughs> Update. <laughs> Update. Pablo Escobar's cocaine hippos. Oh. We have come up with a plan. To get rid of them, <laughs> the cost three point five million dollars. Stop it. Yep. No. Think of how big a hippo is. <laughs> Come on, paddles. Yeah, and they're violent. They'll eat you. <laughs> yeah, Talk yeah. about a pain in the ass. People are worried in Massachusetts. <laughs> somebody's freaked out of a turkey. Try a, uh, a hippo. They're the number one killers in the world of anything alive mm-hmm. except man. Oh my God. Uh, they're going to relocate the seven. I've told you they were coming up with a plan, but now they have it. Um, they've worked it out. They're going to relocate 70 cocaine hippos, descendants from drug trafficker Paulo Escobar's private uh, menagerie, will cost about $3.5 million. It will form part of a deal that the local uh, government signed with various instructions, including the Colombian Car- Archit- Architectural Institute. Da, da, da. A sanctuary in India will provide a home. For- for the other 60 hippos, since it's impossible to transport them back to their native Africa, well, how did he get them here? Right. I'm going to have to go research that. Probably Baby not. hippos? Smuggled, smuggled them yeah, in? Smuggler. From Africa? Yep. There's between 130 and 160 of the hippos. They've spread out far behind, far beyond his ranch. And that's just bullshit. If you're just a regular Colombian with a pond, and now i got to deal with a... <laughs> 7,000 pound hippo that's ready to eat my ass every day. I would be mad too. Totally. I bet even if you shot it, it wouldn't kill it. I mean, <laughs> the original hippos were part of a collection of exotic animals he had amassed in the 80s at his ranch about 200, 155 55 miles from Medellin. After his death in 1993, authorities relocated most of the animals, but not the hippos because they're too difficult to transport. Mm hmm. Yeah. There you go, three point five million. And you know what? If you're listening to this podcast and you're helping me do the work of the Lord, I will let you know when they've been successfully removed, and yeah. everyone in Colombia can relax. Update. <laughs> this is so half ass backwards. Yep. Bed Bath and Beyond. Oh no! <laughs> Wait till I tell Bob and Clark. They can <laughs> now go back because there's going to be inventory. They were in there looking for something. They didn't have any. Whatever, they they I forgot. They were looking for a pillow. They get a $120 million lifeline to help stock near no. empty shelves. No, you don't need to stock the shelves. That was the problem in the first place. Somebody tell the 92-year-old in charge of this thing, Papa, it's not because there's shit not on the shelves. <laughs> oh, my God. Who would give the cash starved bath and beyond, which is scrambling to avoid bankruptcy, and now it's a $120 million lifeline to help it stock near empty shelves. One reason the chain sales have fallen and losses have mounted is because the company doesn't have the funds needed to buy inventory in order to stock shelves. Like I said, first, get a liquor license. <laughs> Second, open a round bar in the middle, mm-hmm. a giant round bar. Yeah. And then sell everything you have in there first. Right. 
Don't ignore those 75 coffee makers you got over there. No. Buy one, get one, drink free. There you go. Yeah. You can make an espresso martini right there at the bar. Right. You get a dollar off if you make it yourself. It's a great idea. Although we move quickly and effectively to change the assortment and other merchandising and marketing strategies, inventory was constrained. We did not achieve our goals, said CEO Sue Gove in a statement. $120 $120 million is financial help specifically designed to address the need to stock those shelves and attract shoppers back to something other than store closing sales at the location stated for closure. Wow. What? <laughs> You're going to put more inventory in the stores that are closing? <laughs> Who? This is like the backwards business person. Uh-huh. Everything you shouldn't do. They're not good at math. The money comes from Restore Capital, whatever that is, okay. which will purchase up to $100 million of merch in order to su- supplement stock. Oh, my God. The agreement enables us to increase our inventory. because it, This is just delaying the inevitable, guys. Yes. Well, who would do this? Do these people need a write-off? Maybe. These people? Maybe it's dead. Restore capital? Maybe it's dead merchandise. <sighs> Maybe it fell off a truck. <sighs> wow. Even with Wendy, Wednesday's cash infusion, it has not announced play, plans to scale back its stock sales plans and said it, has no long, it is no longer facing the risk of bankruptcy. The proceeds of the stock sale would give the company the cash it needs to pay down debt that it cannot afford, while the assistance it's getting from Restore Capital that would instead just give it much-needed additional inventory. The company is also in the process of closing its remaining stores with 400 of roughly 760 in the process of shutting down. Okay. They don't... <sighs> when your CEO is 400 years old, you can't let him go, well, we missed that internet deal. <laughs> and then just keep putting shit in this giant store uh-huh. without doing something to get me to come back in there. Because right. my feelings on Bed Bath & Beyond, probably, well, like I said, I went to mine because that, la- that man had a squirrel dressed like a pioneer lady in a yeah. stroller, and that's why I went. Really, to see if he would be there, every, like, every Tuesday, <laughs> the lady told me. But other than that, I didn't really care about going in there, and it was right next to Pet Smart or Pet Carnival or whatever the hell I go into. <laughs> pet Carnival. <laughs> you not go to Pet Carnival. What? <laughs> if there's not one day Pet Carnival, there should, there should be, be one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> holy oh. shit. They found it. Ridiculous. <laughs> holy shit, they found it. Archaeologists find new clues to the lost colony mystery. Okay. What? The lost colony of Roanoke. Roanoke, yeah. I've been there um, a couple times. I didn't know that. You can go. Oh. And they have a, a visitor center with the history of it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. Okay. If you do know... It'll be short and sweet. For centuries, the fate of the lost colony of Roanoke has puzzled historians and archaeologists alike. The settlement, established by English explorers in 1587 on the coast of what is now North Carolina, disappeared without a trace. It's fucking weird. Now, new discoveries are shedding light on what may have happened to the settlers. In 1854, Queen Elizabeth I granted Sir Walter Raleigh, which is what Raleigh, North Carolina, is named after. A charter to establish a new colony in the New World. In, in 1587, he sent 117 people to establish a settlement on Roanoke Island. The group included men, women, children, including Virginia Dare, the first English child born in the New World. However, oh, I bet that's a real blue bud family. I was the first baby born. <laughs> However, by the time a resupply mission arrived in 1590, the settlers were nowhere to be found. The only word, the only clue was the word croatone. I'm not saying that right. C R O A T O A N. Yeah. Croton. 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 Carved into a tree. Oh. Right. Now, how desperate are you? <laughs> I don't know. They may not have had ink wells or something to write on, right. but to carve into a tree, what it, theories abound? What happened? Bound to as to what happened to the settlers. Some believe they were killed by Native Americans, while others think they were assimilated into a Native American tribe. Wow. I don't think that's very likely. No. I think the Indians would have helped them. 
the Indians back then probably would have helped them, but I don't think they would have gone along with that. Still, others speculated that they tried to sail back to England with what boat? Did they keep their boat and were lost at sea? However, no concrete evidence has ever been found to support any of these theories. Recently, archaeologists working on Hatteras Island located... um, There's my second page. Located 50 miles southeast of the Roanoke Island have uncovered new clues that may help solve the mystery. The team, led by so-and-so... So-and-so discovered several artifacts that suggest the settlers may have tried to establish a new settlement on Hatteras Island. But why? Like Cape Hatteras. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, like Cape Hatteras. Why move from one island to the other? And how'd they get there? What boat? Mm-hmm. What is the point of moving from one island to the other? It's going to be the same shit. True. Yep. True. Among the artifacts were found, found were pieces of pottery, tools, and coins that date back to the late 16th century. The pottery style is similar um, to that used by the settlers at Roanoke, and the, co- and the coins are British, which indicates they likely brought over, they were likely brought over by the colonists. What good are your coins in America? That's like my mom packing it. thick socks in the summer. What do you, what do you, they, you can't use those when you get there? Nope. What are you doing? You want to give trade coins to other British people? Mm-hmm. One particularly intriguing find was a silver ring with a small engraving of a Maltese cross. The cross is similar to one found on a map drawn by John White, the governor of the Roanoke colony, that was discovered in the British Museum in the 1990s. The map is believed to have been created in 1855, two years before the colony was established. After another interesting discovery was a small stone with a cross carved into it. The cross is similar to the one on the ring, and the stone itself is a type of limestone that's not found in the area. This suggests it was brought over from England and may have been used as a marker or a gravestone. The archaeologist also found evidence of a small fort or enclosure that was likely used for protection against Native American attacks. The structure was made up of a series of wooden posts that formed a perimeter around a central area. The posts were sharpened at the top, which meant, indicates they were meant to deter attackers. All of these discoveries point to the possibility that the Roanoke colonists may have tried to establish a new settlement on Hatteras Island after leaving Roanoke. However... Evidence also suggests their, suggests their attempt was short-lived. The four-door enclosure that was discovered was small and rudimentary, which indicates that it was not meant to be a permanent settlement. The pottery and other artifacts were also not in great condition, which suggests they were not used for long. So what happened to the settlers after they left Hatteras Island? It's still unclear. One theory is they may have tried to sail back to England and were lost at sea. Everybody keeps talking about sailing back to England. On what boat? Right, exactly. And bullshit, I ain't going back. And you have supplies. Right. Do you have, no, I don't, mm. I think it might have been disease, but why is no one bringing that up? It was just more romantic. <laughs> Maybe. It's more romantic. Uh, despite the new clues, the mystery of the lost colony is far from unsolved. However, the discoveries on Hatteras Island provide a valuable insight to what may have happened as archaeologists continue to explore there and may, may uncover more evidence that sheds light. Yeah. I don't know. Termites? What are we voting? I say disease, because that could wipe out everybody, and if you get too sick, you can't do anything to prove you were there. No. I just don't think the Indians would have killed them. Not that I think there weren't some mean Indians, Native Americans, but in the beginning, they were kind of, well, they were kind of like, what do you guys want? We'll right. help you out, you know, and then we take them to Thanksgiving and trick them. <laughs> yeah. Holy, holy shit. A rediscovered painting of Flemish 17th century painter Peter Bruegel, the Younger, is that his real name? For years hidden in a family, for years hidden in a family house, will be presented at auction in Paris on Tuesday and is expected to fetch dollars, six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The painting, L'Avocat. It's French, L apostrophe, A V O C A T. L'Avocat du Village, which means the village lawyer, is one of Bruegel's largest known works, measuring blah, blah, blah. It was unknown in the art world until, uh, it was unknown in the art world as the most recent generation of the family who possessed it since the 1900s thought it was fake. This family had it and they thought it was a fake. Well, you know what? That's something my family would do. 
just sit around and go, I don't know, I think it's fake. But we would never like call somebody and go, hey, why don't we get an expert? Why don't you get me another beer right. and find an expert instead of going, what does Matt think? I don't know. What's Pat think? I don't know. The family, who wishes to remain unknown, yeah, I'd be embarrassed too, had asked Malo de Lucas of auctioneers something something to estimate the value of their house. But instead, he, fought, he discovered a masterpiece. I found this painting in the house behind a door in the television room, oh my God. calling it one of the biggest surprises of his career. I started estimating this room, and then I turned back and saw this painting. It was a very good surprise for me. He believes the artwork work was bought as an authentic one, but over se several generations had lost its authenticity wow. uh, within the family. What's incredible is we're giving back them this, this authenticity by saying, your artwork is real. Bruegel the Younger, whose father Bruegel the Elder, died when he was five, didn't use one of his father's compositions for this painting, as he usually did, um, but revisit popu the popular theme of the village lawyer. Huh. huh. It was painted between 1615 and 1617. Whoa. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, well, I'm going to save that one. Uh, I'm saving it. This is the craziest. This, it, ah. This really happened. Snake on a plane, Cobra in airline cockpit prompts emergency landing. Wait, what? A Cobra. Stop it. Yep. It's not a commercial plane. I saw a picture. It of doesn't them. matter. Stop. <laughs> yeah, it does. No. Because then it can slither back to my seat. Oh. South African authorities are applauding a pilot's courage for safety landing an aircraft after feeling a venomous stowaway cobra slithering. Oh. On his body, mid-flight. Oh. Oh. The pilot, Rudolf Aramis, told CNN he was piloting a small aircraft on Monday with four colleagues aboard. There's five people shoved in this tiny little plane. Oh. When he felt a cold sensation underneath my shirt at my hip area. Oh, God. At first, oh. I thought it was my water bottle leaking. As I turned to my left and looked down, I saw the head of a snake receding back underneath my seat. Oh my God. Oh God. I had a moment of stunned silence, he said. It was more as if my brain did not register what was truly going on at the moment. It was a moment of disbelief, I think. Before departing on the first day of his multi-leg trip, he had heard from people at the airport that they saw this Cape Cobra that was seeking refuge underneath our wing of the aircraft and had a suspicion that it crawled into the engine cowling. Oh, God. A search of the plane turned up nothing. So we assumed the snake had gotten away and went on his merry way. Oh. Oh, you know what happens when you assume you, as the nuns would say, you make an ass out of you <laughs> and me. <laughs> That's a big assumption when we're talking about a cobra. Yeah. The snake was apparently hiding and emerged mid-flight. Oh. Oh, the passengers, the pilot told the passengers informed air control, Air traffic controllers that he had a bit of a situation and landed the plane nearby. All five people aboard emerged unscathed, the and the snake was found under the pilot seats in, in a nice, pretty little bundle. The snake was a large Cape Cobra. Never heard of that. Doesn't matter. And according to South African Civil Aviation Authority, which congratulated Aramis for displaying impeccable bravery after landing his aircraft incident-free, albeit under extreme pressure. He this thing can kill like 19 people in a minute. It's like one of the most poisonous. I Googled it. Yeah. Can you? Any snake. But then I wonder if he knew it was a cobra. He probably, if he's South African, he probably looked at it and thought, oh, shit. I doubt it had its hood up under his shirt. Speaking of crazy animals, <laughs> this, is, this is for all the termites to go look at and decide. This animal was captured on camera at the Benston Rio Grande Valley State Park. Mystery animal caught on camera in Texas Park ignites debate on social media. Facebook users can't stop speculating over what the creature is. Seen inside a Texas state park could be. Well, have you guys ever... I never heard of a nutria until Ron White when he lived on a lake in Texas. Right. Mm -hmm. They're big kind of water rats. That's what it looks like to me. It does not... It could be a bear, but it has the shortest bear legs ever if it's a bear. All right. Then people are saying it's this thing, too. Um, they posted a snapshot of the animal on Facebook asking the public to help identify it. Well, they probably had no idea what was going to happen on Facebook. If you oh, throw shit God. like that out there, no. 
first, the funny ones are always my favorite. It didn't take fa- Facebook uh, users long to put out their best guesses. Uh, they could be a, uh, a possum crossed with a raccoon. What? No. <laughs> no. A chupacabra. If it's a chupacabra, it's the fattest one ever to walk Earth. That's the thing about chupacabras. They're very thin. Like, they move quickly. Yeah. This thing is a fatty. But so far, no one's nailed down its true identity. Uh, I'm going to put a picture of it in the notes. You guys could go look. <laughs> Pregnant badger. That would be the largest badger. Another guest, Jagarundi. Rare in Texas, but I've seen one. What's a Jagarundi? It's, oh, wait. It's an endangered cat species that eats birds, rabbits, and small rodents. Typically hunts during the... No, that's not a cat no. of any kind of cat family. It's like a baby jaguar. Like a baby jaguar? Yeah, it's a tiny little... Let's see if it's a cross between a jaguar and a monkey. Jaguar and a monkey? Can you own them? Yeah. Kind of dumb. I'm going to go get it. one. It's a wild cat. The agency said it's most likely an American badger, but it'll keep the um, uh, public up to date as park employees continue to investigate the mystery. Um, I don't really know what a badger looks like for real. You know what else I didn't know what one looked like? A mole. Oh, they're horrifying. Oh, Ugh. man. Yeah. My, the guy who helps me de-winterize and winterize the boat, Justin was telling me his cat brought in a mole. And it was under, like, just a free-floating little rug. And all of a sudden, he saw his rug move. Oh, and he whipped, op- whipped over the rug. And the cat, like, went <laughs> psycho. Like, that's my toy. And I put it there. Oh, hands off, yeah. mofo. And I Googled it. They have webbed hands Ooh. for digging. God. Yeah. He's like, picture a mini aardvark. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, okay. Uh, bad news for Vicky Madigan. Uh-oh. And it... Thank God Easter's over. <laughs> Popular Easter candy peeps contains additive link to cancer. This is what I want to say, though. How many peeps do you need to eat <laughs> to get cancer? Because let me tell you what. I know for sure it could be over 1,000, and my mom has not gotten peeps cause cancer. <laughs> right. And she has eaten over 1,000 in her lifetime, I guarantee you. She's the only one in the family that likes them. The only one. Yeah. There are a lot. Oh. <sighs> The original yellow colored chick is still the of Peeps is still the best selling uh, best selling product under their brand. Um, Consumer Reports called out several Peeps candies as containing the dye that is a known carcinogen. Uh, well, I mean, but how much of it's in there? It's red dye number three is particularly concerning since it's found in many products marketed to children who are at risk for developing health problems. I can't t- test to this because I took one bite and I hated them. Never ate them again. Um, it's red dye number three they're really mad about. It's it's approved for use in food and oral forms and drugs. It's been banned in cosmetics since 1990. Stop it. Yeah. Should we eat it in food? I guess. Mm. The yellow peeps are okay. They don't contain that. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, you know, if you're particular... Stay away from the red ones. <laughs> Stay away from the pinkies. Go for the yellow peeps. I don't like any of them, but God love you for everybody who does. Um, this I waited till this story was over because I didn't want to get caught up in the the insanity of it. But uh, me, my friend Kelly uh, McFarland, comedian, uh, she's been. Cr- we like all the crime podcasts and all that stuff. Um, there was this girl, so Madeline McCann was the girl who went missing on the, the Portuguese, they were in Portugal, I think, right? Yeah. The on vacation, Brits. the Brits people, and two of their kids were still there, but the one girl was gone. A horrible, horrible, horrible story. It's been years now. And there was a girl in Poland who said she was Madeline McCann. Oh. Apparently this lady was on Dr. Phil. I didn't see it. Wow. But I've seen pictures of the lady, and I'm like, you don't even look like an adult version of the girl that went missing. Like, I don't. It'd be one thing if you really looked like her right. and then you told this crazy story. I'd be like, well, maybe she got trafficked, you know. But you don't look like her all grown up. Right. We all still kind of look like the picture when you're five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the story is over. And it is definitely not. She is definitely not Madeline McCann. Um, the extraordinary story behind a young Polish woman who became an internet sensation by claiming she was Madeline McCann can be revealed for the first time today. 
Social media post by Julie Wendell, 21, suggesting she was the missing British girl who disappeared in 2007 went viral. And where did it go viral? On the Tiki Talk. Oh, no. This is why the Tiki Talk sometimes ain't so great. It's the new Facebook. It's the new Facebook, but it's shorter and faster. Right. right. The old Facebook. Here's 18 pages of the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> Here's all the children. Here's Mikey. He only found a quarter. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for our Easter egg hunt, we put big bucks in those eggs and lots of scratch off tickets. You can get, you can get yourself a $25 scratch off in there. Oh yeah. And then we ferret out the gambling addicts Mm -hmm. and we see who's going to have a problem later in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she even appeared on us, us talk show to discuss her claims before the DNA test conclusively demolished her claims and revealed her as a fantasist. I've never heard it. I've never heard it said like that. A fantasist. Yeah, I've never... I um, like it. I like it. Yeah. I can think of a lot of people that applies to for different reasons. <laughs> Her mother, Dorta Wendelt Chowinski, Chowinski yeah. and her stepfather so-and-so are particularly upset by the actions of the U.S. media personality, Dr. Fia Johannesson, a self-styled psychic and mystic who jumped on Julia's claims and claimed to be helping her uncover the truth while pushing her into a number of high-profile appearances. A family friend told um, the press, Julie is a very disturbed woman. Her mother, Dora, Dorita, is beside herself and can't believe how this is snowballed. She's very, Julia is very sick and she wants her to get help she needs. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently this girl's done this like three times. The, the Madeline McCann one in the first time she's done it. Oh. The problem is a tiki taki. <laughs> Gives her ideas. Mm-hmm. Um... She needs to be home with her family so she can get the treatment she needs, which will make the family happy. Home for Julia is the and her family is the city of Warclaw in southwestern Poland, 190 miles away from Warsaw, which is steeped in more than a thousand years of history. It's rated as one of the top 100 cities in the world to live and is famed for its picturesque Gothic squares and churches. It is here that the family moved from northern Poland in 2009. Wow. Uh, her mother is a very successful businesswoman and runs a chain of clothing shops. Uh, she had a private school education, this girl. It was so sad because you could tell that Dorta loved her and she just wanted her the best for her. She rebelled and left home and started seeing a guy who was a drug addict, and that didn't help her. Um, oh, she has different names online, too. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. She's, um, she claimed to be a girl who went missing in Germany in 2015. Then she said she was another girl who went missing as a 19-month-old child in 2003 in Utah. Wow. Yeah. See, normally, without the TikTok, there's, these, no, audience. They, there's no audience for all this. They'd right. be like, hey, some crazy chick said, she could go to the cops and say, right. hey, I think I'm that chick. And the cops would be like, yada, yada, blah, blah. Right. They're not, yeah. It's... They're not playing. No. Yeah. Foot Locker! What? <laughs> it's a this is... Business affects you on a daily basis. Business that affects you. I got to think of an acronym, acronym from my business section articles. There's, uh, there's been some recommendations. On Are there been good re- I haven't had time to go on the YouTubers yeah. and look at the comments. Foot Locker, uh, one of the leading retailers of athletic footwear and apparel, has announced that it will close more than 400 stores in North America by 2026 as part of a new strategy. Are you listening, Bed Bath & Beyond? <laughs> to refresh its brand and appeal to younger customers. Good on you, Foot Locker. Because yes. I do think tennis shoes are something people like to actually try on. Yeah. We need <clears throat> brick and mortar stores for shoes. Yes. We don't, I guess, need them, but we like them. people like it. Mm-hmm. They're going to focus on opening new concept stores that offer more personalized and experiential shopping experiences for different segments of customers, such as sneaker enthusiasts, <laughs> athletes, kids, and bargain hunters. It will also reduce its presence in low-performing mall locations, Malls. which account for 10% of its sales. Malls just got to stop. Yep. I don't understand there's a mall by my house, and it's a fancy mall. It's got the fancy stores. It's okay. new, fancy, new-ish. Fan, you know, Anthropology, Lululemon. Wow. Yeah, but there's that's where my old lens crafters was, and I would go in the day. Not a goddamn person in there. Just me and an old guy who works at Lens Crafters who used to, 
One day I said, oh, I see you're an Alabama fan. Roll Tide. You know, just trying to, he's like, oh, do you like college football? I said, well, enough. Right. I'm from Missouri. Not a lot to cheer for there. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really got my heels dug in, but I do. I am aware of it. And he goes, well, look at this. And he pulls out a letter from Bear Bryant. And what? if you're not familiar, Whoa. <laughs> he was the coach of Alabama football for years and years and years. He's dead. And it was just a letter um, from Bear Bryant to that guy. I'm in lens crafters. What is going on? And I'm reading that. I mean, it was kind of interesting. No, no. But I told him, you better not just keep this folded in your pocket anymore. It's going to get. Anyway, there's nobody in that mall. Just me and him, the guy with the Bear Bryant letter. And he's about ready to retire. There's, It's always empty. Um. So they're going to have a new store concept. It's part of its lace-up plan. It'll introduce four new store concepts. Community, these will be about 15,000 square feet and will target sneaker enthusiasts. Performance, these will stores will be about 10,000 square feet and they will target athletes whose performance enhance, seek performance enhancements in their shoes. Well, why aren't we all seeking that? Just because I'm not running a marathon doesn't I mean I don't want the top performance out of my shoes. <laughs> Listen, just because I don't look like I'm ready for a marathon doesn't mean I don't want my feet to think we might be doing it. You'll get personalized fittings? Well, we should all get that. Gate analysis. Gate analysis. I remember one time my mom goes, you walk like you had polio. What? So she said, you have a polio walk. She's talking to me like I'm a person on the street she never met. I go, what the fuck does that mean? Sometimes you drag your left leg. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And now I'm always self and now I'm always very conscious of is my left leg moving right? And I never had polio. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> you polio walk mom. you walk like you have polio. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Easter. <laughs> um, there's value stores. There's four concepts. This is the third one. Value. These stores will be about eight thousand square feet and will target bargain hunters who look for great deals on quality products. Okay. They offer clearance items. No, I don't want to be no. in this one. No. no. Kids, great idea. These stores will be about 7,500 square feet and will target parents who shop for their children's footwear needs. They will offer a wide range of sizes, styles, and brands for all kids in all ages. It's kind of cool. Great. I think they'll make it. Bad Bath & Beyond, please call the people in charge of Foot Locker <laughs> and say, hey, how are you moving into the 2000s? <laughs> Ah, terabytes. Okay, now, I am old. And Grandma here was still looking for court TV. And it's not on on direct TV anymore. But guess where you can watch all trials? Because I was watching uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's thing. And then before that, um, the big one, what was I watching? The one right before that, uh, a, a murder or some shit. Um... Mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Manny Manny stuff. Um, it's all on YouTube. Now, it's they have a channel on YouTube that's devoted to, like, high-profile trials. In court. If, if the judge allows the, the camera in the courtroom. We'll put it in the shelves. We'll put it in the shelves. Yep. But now that the, 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 one of the children told me, go on YouTube, Mama Termite. And I was like, bam! Oh, there it was. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is going to be on. I'm going to check, for, do the work of the Lord and check. But it's the opening statements begin in the trial of Doomsday Mom Lori Vallow Daybell. That is a cray cray yes. case. Uh, Kelly McFarland gave me a bunch of the podcast on that one, which I listened to months and months ago in the car somewhere. Uh, she thought the kids were zombies. It's a cult. Like this, she followed this Chad guy. She wow. thought her children were zombies. It. I don't even know if you believe. The, I do believe that she went way too down this sinkhole with this guy. But anyway, her they're having separate trials, okay. Chad and her. Mm -hmm. Lori's beginning statement. So we will check the YouTubes, and we will see. Um, okay, I think I'm going to save my fraudster one for next week. No. Yeah, no. I am, I am, I am, because I want to read more. I want to read more. Well, can we do an intro? Just an intro. Okay, I'll do an in intro, okay? Yep. 
Former Forbes 30 under 30. The press has so much to be shamed, shamed for yep. because they did this with Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah. And it's not just women. They did it with Sam Bankman Freed yeah. or Sam Frito Bankman, whatever his fucking Sam name is. Um, <laughs> anybody under 40 that's running around in a hoodie that tells you they live in the Bahamas most of the time, Run away from them. Yeah. Yeah. Something ain't right. Mm -hmm. And now Elizabeth doesn't fit that one. And this girl, didn't, this lady didn't fit it. But the 30 under 30. You know, I was in a 40 under 40 in some St. Louis magazine once. And I thought, yeah, well, whatever. Right. They no, have entertainers right. get to be mixed in with the people that are actually <laughs> making money. <laughs> like, hey, look at this clown. Her tax thing said she made $62,000. Yeah, but I got free food at the Funny Bone. Okay, I got free wings and beers for a year. What's that worth? Mm -hmm. The improvs had full meals. Mm -hmm. um, I was at a 40 under 40 thing or 30 under 30. Might have been 30 under 30. And I thought, they don't really know me. I remember thinking this, but I went to journalism school. They asked me these questions about comedy. And I said, oh, here's my thing. They just believed me. Now, the good thing is I'm an honest person because I fear the Lord because I went to a Catholic school. I'm not going to do that shit because I think something bad will happen to me. Right. It's really selfish at the end of the day, my behavior, but it's presenting a lot of it's preventing misery for other people. Um, but I remember thinking, they don't know. You couldn't go online and run criminal checks. You couldn't yeah. do background checks. You could be putting me in there and I could be a psycho. Oh. They just don't check. No. They don't care. Well, Forbes, oh, no. they had a 30 under 30, and they put this lady in. Uh, she's a startup CEO accused of $175 million fraud scheme against J.P. Morgan Chase. Wow. Yeah. Now, I can do this story, but that's going to be a last. No, I have to do the happiest country in the world. Well, no, I'm, we're, we're not, I got to get going here. No. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. But I was going to look for more, but I'll look for more anyway. Yeah. When J.P. Morgan Chase announced two years ago that it would purchase Frank, like the name Frank, the man's name, a startup college financial planning company for students, the global banking giant said it that by acquiring the apparently popular, keyword apparently, apparently. popular platform for $175 million, it hoped to strengthen its relationship with millions of young people. Well, you know what you could do to strengthen those relationships? Give out student loans at a cheaper rate than everyone right. else. Yeah. yeah, I'd be your BFF, yeah. so all kinds of friends. And then give us something free for our, the dorm room. Beer. Yeah, yeah. A free beanbag. Every kid wants a beanbag. Bean so comfortable. <laughs> Better than a backpack. Yeah, yeah. I don't, and a, or a toaster. No, That's God, too, no. no. But J.P. Morgan and federal authorities now believe there was a big problem. Many of the millions of students said to be using Frank never existed. The Department of Justice filed criminal charges, which were unsealed Tuesday against... Charlie Javis, Frank's founder and former CEO, Charlie being a woman, alleging she engaged in a brazen scheme when she sold her company to J.P. Morgan Chase in 2001. Do you, can you imagine the guts you have to have to lie to a bank? Yeah. Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah. That's what's going to bring you down. Uh -huh. The lying to the bank. You can get away with the rest of it. But you can't, it's um, Anna Anadalbe. Yeah. She could have gotten away with tell, giving rich if you solicit a rich person and say, give me money, and they do it, that's not a crime. No. That If you've tricked them out of it. Trickster. But a bank? Yeah. Securities Exchange Commission separately announced its own fraud complaint against Javis on Tuesday, seeking a variety of punishments, including civ civil penalties and a ban on her being a corporate officer. That's it? Yeah. Federal prosecutors, prosecutors and CEO accused Javis of defrauding J.P. Morgan into believing that Frank had 4.2 million users when really the number was less than three at hundred thousand. Wow. Well, that's kind of on you, J.P. Yeah. Morgan. Who did it if right? anybody under the age of forty comes up to me and goes, "I have a million and a half followers on TikTok," I go, <laughs> "No, you don't." <laughs> <laughs> There's comics now. Seven million people have watched my YouTube special. Really? Right. Really? <laughs> really? No, the numbers. Come on. Go yeah, go go for you. <laughs> The only one that's been 100% honest, like my friend Michael Somerville, and you can see it on his Instagram, 
first he he does sketch videos that are pretty funny with some the other comedian actor lady. I don't know her name, but she's funny too. And he's super popular in India. What? But and then his friends India? go, "We well, should do a sh- show in New York and invite all the Indian people." And Michael goes, "No, you don't get it. My Indian fans are in India. <laughs> They're not in New York or somewhere around." But his yeah. thing shows. <clears throat> shows. Yeah. I don't, who yeah. would believe this child and yeah. give her all this money? According to the authorities, <coughs> 31-year-old Javis allegedly fabricated and manipulated Frank's data to make it appear as though her company had serviced far more customers than it actually did. As a result of her suspected deceit, she stood to make more than $45 million. She faces, faces charges of bank fraud, security fraud, wire fraud, and attending, affecting a financial institution and conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud. She is fucked. Following her arrest on Monday night, she was released on $2 million bond and subjected to travel restrictions. Good luck with that. Yeah. The arrest should warn entrepreneurs who lie to advance their business that their lives will catch up to them. She's denied the allegations. Yeah. (laughs) It was designed to... the, The platform that she designed was to simplify the student loan application program, program, uh, process. <coughs> um, that's why J.P. Morgan wanted to acquire it. The company helped rocket Javis to national promises with a glowing feature in Forbes and a spot on magazines coveted 30 under 30, listing young professionals in finance. That's so funny. That's so funny. Why would you believe a 31-year-old when they're like, oh, yeah, there's that 450 million yeah. people, they're doing it? And then you need a computer forensic freak to say, give me a list of your followers and go through them and find out how many are bots, how many are fake, how many are redone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are so many numbers on YouTube's I see with these comics where I'm like, oh my God, I, this. But now I think there's a lot of comics just doing it, saying, I, I know how some of those numbers are manipulated. Uh-huh. People have showed me how to do that. I have yeah. no interest in that because... I want the people to be real or yeah. you're just misjudging shit. Right. But when you're, I think there's a lot of the younger comics that are using that to be noticed, even yeah. if it's not true right. or it's bots, they don't care. They want that number on the screen and then they circle it or they star it or they mark it. And then people it's act as if, and then it will be yeah. that kind of theory of trying to get somewhere. And I guess it works for enough of them because they're all seem to be on board. Um, well, we will keep track of what happens to this person. Yes. Um, yeah, that's what she done did. J.P. Morgan, that's a lot of that's on you, though. I mean, this is a bad chick. This lady's a bad person. But you should have been more responsible Absolutely. than to believe a 31-year-old. Absolutely. With all this bullshit. I mean, not, I believe 31-year-olds in general. All right, I'm going to save the happiest countries. You know what I'm going to leave you with? It's a feel-good story. I thought the happiest country was feel-good story. Well, this is even a better feel-good story. Okay. Thank you for talking about the fun. Yeah, I'll keep up on her. They have proof now that the dire wolf did live in Canada during the Ice Age. No! Like the one in Thrones. The one in Thrones. Go, I'll put, I'll try to find it for the notes. I don't know if I can. It might have been in this article. They had a chart where they're like, this is the height of a dog. This is the height of a wolf. And here's a six foot man. The dire wolf, way bigger than the wolf, about half the size of the six foot man. Whoa. Yeah. Um, this is c- crazy cool. Yeah, it wasn't in here. I saw somewhere. Um, there's an artist impression of the dire wolf. Uh, Canada now has its first dire wolf. Congratulations, Paddle. Yeah. And it was found by where you're from. For the first time, a Canadian fossil has been confirmed as having. Come from the Ice Age predator featured in the TV series Game of Thrones. The specimen from near Medicine Hat in southern Alberta oh, was tentatively, tentatively identified decades ago, but a team from the Royal Ontario Museum used new technology to finally lock it down. It's never been fully described, said evolutionary biologist Ashley Reynolds, lead author of the paper published in the Journal of Quaternarian Science. This has never done so this has hard. never been done for for the specimen. It wasn't easy. The entire specimen, which is between 25 and 50,000 years old, consists of uh, one jaw badly crushed with some remaining teeth. We could tell pretty clearly it was a member of the dog family about the size of a wolf, 
So it's either a gray wolf or a dire wolf. There are ways to tell them apart based on teeth, but this animal is too old for that. When the animal gets really old, it starts to wear down his teeth. A.K.A. my parents. <laughs> wow. This can mean the features of the teeth get worn away. Although dire wolves tend to be significantly bigger than gray wolves, this individual was in the size range of both species. So researchers, researchers tried something else. The team took points along the outline of the fossil and used a computer program to estimate its shape. They compared that with known values from gray and dire wolves. Based on the parts in the shape, um, which we do have, it does look more like a dire wolf, for That's sure. Awesome. Yeah, how yeah. cool is that? What the discovery means. Confirming the presence of dire wolves adds to our picture of what the Ice Age looked like in Canada, Randall said. We're starting to get a picture of what lived in Canada in past ages. We see a fauna that is very similar to what we would even see in California, but this area would have had a unique mixing of southern and arctic species. There's some exa- there's evidence, for example, that cave lions could have lived in the area. Uh, this one was relatively small for the species. It was very old, so it must have been a successful wolf. Good job. <laughs> At some point in its life, it lost one of its big teeth and had to make do. That's just awesome. That's great. To think that they were around. I mean, yeah. I don't know. You better you need it to be your friend like it yeah. was. not um, yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you. That's so good. No, we'll save the happiest countries for next week because it's worth a little chatter about. Okay. That We're going to leave you on that feel-good story. It's nice to know that... Thrones ain't making that shit up. What do you think the happiest country is? Well, I already know. Because I I read it. I already know. But there's the top ten, and I don't know all those. I haven't read all that. Um, And then there's the saddest countries in the world. Oh, I can guess it. Some. One I wouldn't have thought that's on there. I wouldn't have thought it. No. No. I would have thought it was fine. Like, not super happy, but not super crabby. Um, All right, before we go to our minds... Please go rate the special on Amazon. Much appreciated. Um, the t-shirts, yeah, no. Here's the t-shirt. So Madigan's podcast on the front. Go. It's a summer w- short sleeve. A lot of women have said make a V-neck. I will. Right. I just haven't gotten around to it. And this says, yeah, no, international, yeah, no, union. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. It's no. really fun. It's super soft, as they all are. They, They're on the website. Yeah. If you want them. And there's stickers on the website, too. We have Madigan podcast stickers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go to Durham. Go to Durham. Uh, Friday is sold out, April 21st, April 22nd, because we added Saturday. Mm-hmm. There's some tickets left for that. Mm-hmm. Durham, let's make this happen. We'll do a little special for the moms. Yeah, a little special for the moms from Mother's Day. And then Niceville, Florida, uh-huh. which is down the road from Meanville. You have to go to Meanville first. <laughs> 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 it's by Destin. Yeah. I had to look it up. I never heard yeah. of it. But wouldn't that be great if your town is Niceville? Nobody would ever ask how to spell it. No. Yeah. Nope. When I, uh, like for a while, when my address was Lake Ozark, uh, or even Osage Beach. Osagi? Yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Osage. Like the Indi- Osage Indians. <laughs> I didn't know there was an ocean in Missouri. It's private. <laughs> it's it's private. private. It's a private ocean. Y'all got a beach there? <laughs> it's private. I told you. Only people from the tri-state area. <laughs> Iowa is allowed. Kansas is allowed. Some people in Nebraska. And two from Nebraska and two from Illinois. It's a long drive. <laughs> Ponte Verde. Niceville, going there. Ponte Verde. Verde. Yep. Two shows. I think they're both sold out, though. May 5th. May 5th. Yeah. Um, Charleston. Charleston. That's the only the, yeah, there's nothing left there. I think that's sold out. Santa Rosa. Uh, Santa Rosa. I love it. The Luther Burbank. Luther. Luther. Lots of wine there. Something mm-hmm. giant. That place is sneaky. Yeah. Santa Rosa. Because every time I go there, I think, well, this show will be fine. And it is explosively great. It's mm-hmm. insanely, unsuspectingly great. The crowds are great. I like, every time I come off stage, I'm like, somebody should film a special here. And then there's always that one lady that goes, George Carlin did film a special here. And I go, thank, thank you. you. Right, I forgot. You've told me that ten times, and I'm the loser. I yep. forgot. Um, and then Wheatland, California, which is basically Sacramento, the Hard Rock, the Hard Rock Live, mm-hmm. boom. And then Vegas, Vegas in June, something. Hampton the Mirage, Beach. Hampton Beach this mm-hmm. summer. Yep. Cape Cod Melody Tent this summer. Yep. And then we roll into Boise. <laughs> and then we roll on into Boise to the Egyptian Theater. Yep. 
the only theater in the world where the green room is outside. It's you have to walk outside and then back down and then around because it's an old movie theater. Yeah. Oh, we need people to rate the podcast? Why do people yeah. care? Yeah. People, I don't even look this shit up. Yeah. There's also one more thing. You have one day to vote. If you join Taco Bell Rewards to vote now through uh, one day from now, you can vote which fan favorite should return for a limited time. Do you want um, Team Beachy, Be- Beefy Crunch Fritos Flamin' Hot Burrito? No. Or <laughs> Team Cool Ranch Doritos Taco? Oh, I would totally take the hard shell taco over this conglomeration thing. In the, <laughs> no, and you're throwing, you're trying to make a Texas pie, throwing Fritos in there. No, no, Taco Bell's. Don't add ingredients. You have four, and you're really good at them. Taco, Keep it tight. Taco Bell should do a Texas pie. That's, that's what they're trying to do in this thing. It's the beefy crunch Frito, flaming hot. They don't describe it, but I'd say it's a burrito. Versus, I'm gonna join. Taco Bell <laughs> Rewards. I should join anyway on the app. I think you're on it. Am I? Yeah. I don't know if I am. <laughs> That's why I get notifications. Delete. Ignore. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be on theirs and Arby's. Why is Taco Bell texting me? <laughs> Taco Bell should always text me. I never get angry about that. <laughs> I, well, who it is? <laughs> yeah, text back like anybody's answering. All right, termites. I will see you all out on the road. Springtime, ter- springtime termites. It's springtime. It's finally working. It's yep. like 65 degrees today. It's perfect. Yep. I'm going to go golf with Dorf till I have to go. I'm going to my nephew's wedding this weekend in St. Louis. Um, nice. Oh, I'm very excited. The, the, the McHugh part of the family knows how to do it. The McHughes are never a let down. They're cooler alley. Yeah, they're oh, al- their oh, coolers oh. are marked um, IPAs, wow. uh, imports, American standards. Wonderful. Yeah, they've, yeah. They Actually, the party in the backyard on Friday is usually even better than what will happen on Saturday. <laughs> but, but it's hard to recover from the party on Friday yeah. at the backyard. And yeah, my cousin's backyard looks like uh, it should be, there's a place in St. Louis called the Venice Cafe. My yeah. cousin Mary's nailed it. <laughs> anyway, um, so that I won't be working this weekend, but I'll see you out in Durham in April 21 and 22, and then so on and so forth. And then all the um, the tickets are on sale. I'll say one more thing, and I'll let you turn my go. Because the St. Louis show, it went on sale with all the fall dates, and I knew it would happen. I, I, gave, it, I gave it 24 hours or less till I got a call from one of my mom, my mom or my dad going, why are your tickets four hundred dollars? They're not. I don't know who's telling you this. My mom called, and she said, "Because here's the thing, and it is confusing. And I'm not saying this because, um, you know, of age or nothing. If you type in Kathleen Madigan tickets, let's just say you did, all this shit comes up, and they're resales. People are just trying to make money. I don't get that money. Just go to my website. Every link on there takes you." The tickets are 35, 45, 55. If you ever see tickets priced at over, unless it's some very strange thing like the Hamptons or someplace where there's all kinds of rich people, they will never be over 60 bucks um, that I can think of. Unless platinum seating, that's different because the, the people set the price. But the ticket chunks, you just have to go to the website. It's so easy to be tricked though. If you type in my name, all these seat things come up that are not mine. They're, they're not the real one so they could they think oh well, i'll just put them up for 100 bucks maybe somebody will buy it and people must do that for shit because they keep doing it where you're like huh i've been tricked twice except i know stevie nicks is i just go to the nicks fix that's oh, right well, why, wouldn't you? why wouldn't you go to the next nicks fix yeah. yeah yeah so let's shout out that stevie's okay i don't trust all this i don't trust this outgoing information okay. and we'll keep an eye on it. yeah we will keep an eye on it all right, termites. Get outside. Plant some flowers. It's fishing season. It's about to be fishing season. There's a lot of dudes in bass boats in the cove pushing it. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's a, the water's still very cold. If they're catching anything, I don't know what it would be and just you yet. <laughs> you do not want it. You don't want it in your boat. No. You don't want to eat it. No. 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 Yeah. All right, ready? 